Oh, God damn it, guys. Hey, welcome back to the show. It's 420 friendly today. It's 420. You know. Ooh, I, li- Ooh, I like to do this, man. Ooh. Ooh, I like to do this. No! It's illegal. Okay, I'm calling the cops on all of you. So, guys, today we got a story that, you know, you look at it and you say, You have a mental health problem. A lot of people talking about this. It's a pretty stupid story, I would say, but pretty interesting also. And I learned about it through where I get all my news, which is a guy named Ben Chapeno. He's a lecturist. He's an accredited, tenured lecturist at the prestigious university known as YouTube. So let's take a look at what this guy... And there's one thing I have to say. It's 420. I think he was... Bla- I think he's been blazing, man. I think he's been blazing, bro. Yeah, I can tell from the way he's behaving in this in this video. I think he called the hotel. He's like, Adorn my room with golden objects, please. It's like the tomb of a pharaoh in there. Who is this? It's Ben Shapiro. The biggest issue here is that as the left is exposed for what it is, as the mm. radicalism is exposed, Oof. and as they become more unpopular because of that radicalism, no. Finally, you have the left's last gasp. And the last gasp Hell of the yeah. left is we will attack anybody who exposes this stuff. Oof. Which brings us to the execrable Taylor Lorenz. So it's Taylor Lorenz is a garbage heap. She's a horrible <laughs> reporter at the New York Times. She's 87 years old, pretending to be a millennial. So he's talking about this lady, Taylor Lorenz, who it's... Just one of those writers for a paper that I'm sort of like, yeah, who cares? You know, that, that's sorry. Sorry. But uh, I like that he's like, she's 87 years old. She's 87 years old. I was like, let me let me just Google Taylor Lorenz age. She's 37. And then Ben Shapiro age 38. <laughs> she's 87 years old. She's a year younger than me, actually. <laughs> you gotta love. You gotta love. I... Ben, I love you. I honestly, I want to be bros with Ben. And he knows that, okay? He won't answer my emails, but I want to be bros, dude. Okay, there's an account on Twitter. It's called Libs of TikTok. All Libs of TikTok does is it juxtaposes old tweets by liberals on TikTok with their new tweets. So during the Trump era, they'd be like, judges overruling Trump is great. No. And then two years later, like, judges overruling Biden is terrible. That's all Libs of TikTok is. That's all Libs of TikTok is. Okay, this is a couple seconds later. And this makes her very, very bad. This is very bad because she's anti-gay, you see, libs of TikTok. According to the Washington Post ran a several thousand word story by the execrable Taylor Lorenz on this, quote, libs of TikTok gained more prominence throughout the end of the last year, cementing its spot in the right-wing media outrage cycle. Its attacks on the LGBTQ plus community also escalated. By January, Rachel's page was leaning hard into groomer discourse, calling for any teacher who comes out as gauge their students to be, quote unquote, fired on the spot. Her anti-trans treats went especially viral. I mean, this is, I'm I'm sorry. Whoops, whoops. So Ben Shapiro starts off, he's like, why did she do this? All it is, he says, all it is is an account where they post, they repost things that, I don't know, liberals or LGBTQ people say on their TikToks. And they all, that's all it is. We just repost it. Then he reads, (laughs) then he reads it and it's like, By January, Rachel's page was leaning hard into groomer discourse, calling for any teacher who comes out as gauge their students to be, quote unquote, fired on the spot. Her anti-trans treats went especially viral. Then he actually reads, he starts reading from the article and he's like, oh, part of what this account does, this libs of TikTok thing, is it uh, calls for gay teachers to be fired. And you can see in Benjamin, he's like, oh, that's actually kind of fucked up. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Whoops. Remember earlier, remember earlier when I said all they do is repost. All they do is repost things and look at this. Oh no, it's actually worse. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, my dude is so lazy. Like this is how lazy this guy's content is, is that he didn't pre-screen the article. Oh, this is kind of damning for my point. That they were doing way more than just reposting. They were calling for people to get fired. Cancel culture. Too lazy to like look at these art, and then and then he's just like, eh, just post the video, whatever. It totally negates my point, but just post it. Who cares? These idiots will eat up anything. I'm I'm sorry. This is absurd. So you're now tracking down and attempting to uncover the identity of people who are just tweeting stuff on the internet that you don't like. This is your th- this is your job. Okay. So basically, the media are now the intimidation thug wing of the Democratic Party. I wanted to uh, just really quickly show you, uh, give you a little taste 
of this Libs of TikTok channel. Libs of TikTok. <laughs> Ooh. The one thing I have to say about this Twitter account is it is a little bit weird. Okay, so this one especially pisses me off. This is, uh, when is this? This is from like a month ago. This woman is running a, quote, sexy summer camp, unquote, for children in Kentucky. She says she thinks it's good for toddlers to masturbate. Then on uh, March 9th, the same Twitter account, Libs of TikTok, calls this woman a predator. A predator, like that movie Predator. That's a good movie, actually. So this was a thing in the, the kind of dumbass walnut-brained uh, idiot idiotosphere for a while, and I think they completely forgot about it after, like, 20 minutes. But they, they were like, this woman's a predator! This woman's a predator! She does this get sexy summer camp. She's trying to groom kids. Somebody in the... Oh, this lady's actually uh, Christina Pooshaw, but uh, she retweets, you going to jail! Oh, Oprah! Woohoo! I think I did a, a thing about this on the uh, Patreon. I can't remember. Ugh. But I looked way into this. I wasted a bunch of time looking into this thing. It's these people, the the Trillbillies. I think they have a podcast, do the Trillbilly Workers Party. And what this is, is she does a sex sex education classes. You can even look on their website. There's pictures of what it looks like. It's like, it's, it's like being in school. Sex education. Because they're in Kentucky. Okay? And if you don't know about what's going on in Kentucky, they're one of these kind of states where there's a lot of abstinence only education which has led to a ton of a uh, unwanted pregnancies i'm tanya turner with the trillbillies and i teach sex education in rural appalachia so number one i hear a lot about virginity and people clinging to this some kind of definition of virginity because they've been taught a lot of abstinence only especially where i live and maybe where you live too but the data shows that abstinence only education isn't working it hasn't worked probably the sex education that my mama had and she had six kids so most of them were unplanned so here in appalachia we have a much higher unplanned pregnancy rate than the mm. national average. Well over half of all pregnancies here are unplanned. Because they're like, just let the Lord, just let the Lord sort it out. No sex education in schools is evil. They think it's evil to teach sex education in schools. So this uh, lady was like, I'll, okay, I'll do like fun sex education camps, you know, where you bring, bring in your kid. Or if you're a teenager, you come in or whatever. And you actually get a real education so you don't end up pooping out a baby on accident, you idiots. So you can look into it. I would recommend you looking into it. And she seems like a really good person, really nice person. They're all really cool. Of course, <laughs> I would not want to be in their position having some random, and this is the theme here, is having some random moron call you a pedophile for no reason. This is amazing what I found. Well, I was like clicking through, like, who follows this libs of TikTok thing? I found the funniest avatar for a TikTok boomer, I don't know, a boomer conservative, suburban neurotic losing their mind in the middle of nowhere avatar ever. Check this out. Oh, I'm, I'm protecting my family from the gay rain, dude. It's a rain of gay. And if it touches you, you turn gay, dude. Gay rain, it starts to rain, then you will turn gay. Gay rain, I go away to breathe. It's That's definitely an odd feeling of to see something like that and be like, this person has clearly completely lost their mind and is sort of just exercising their their inner demons out on the internet, like man, many of us are. That's It's a combination of horrifying and the funniest thing I've ever seen. That's a That's a... That's an emo that's an internet emotion. So yeah, the story is that this lady Taylor Lorenz, who's written for like the New York Times and the Washington Post and all this crap, she tracked down the people who the woman who runs this site. And I have to say, it's kind of a modern success story. It's like that movie where Will Smith had a kid, you know, and he was trying to find a job, whatever that movie was, and he was like, I can't find a job and all that shit. <laughs> We gotta find someplace safe. Nobody's ever covered this. This is breaking news. Do you think Will Smith slapped that guy because of he couldn't find a job? In the, like they showed in that documentary? Something to think about. That's definitely something that's definitely something we want to spend some time thinking about. But yeah, so she like 
she tracked down the lady who runs this account and put, printed her name in the paper. Turns out it, it's a success story. This woman is like a, a Brooklyn real estate agent who was like, you know what? I'm going to make some profit on the side by starting a insane hate uh, a hate account, a hate Twitter account. It's my side hustle. During the day, I'm grinding, okay? Gary V, ever heard of him? Does V stand for vagina? Gary Vagina, is that his fault? Gary, like if Gary V says, you got to have a side hustle, bro. You got to be doing this right here. You want to make... If you want to make those big bucks so my so i sell real estate in brooklyn which is told probably totally legit nothing weird about that but then on the side hate twitter i do a hate twitter and i get on fox news and i and joe rogan boosts my crap good evening and welcome to tucker carlson <laughs> tonight last year unbeknownst to pretty much nobody a woman in brooklyn started a twitter account that was comprised almost solely of videos of liberals talking about themselves so the concept was very simple. Find interesting tape that had already been uploaded to the internet by the people who made it and then repost that tape. There was what? no editing of it, no special effects. There was very little editorial content. The woman who created it called that account Libs of TikTok. Libs of TikTok now has more followers than the entire population of the state of Wyoming. Libs of <laughs> That's a weird measurement. Why not just, why not just give the number? <laughs> All right, okay, whatever. Millions of parents are grateful for that. So is Christina Pushaw, who's the press secretary for the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis. It was partly in response to videos that she saw on libs of TikTok that Florida ultimately banned public school teachers from lecturing kindergartners about sex. That's no law. Hmm. It's one of the most popular laws in the state. Uh, another thing that this Twitter thing, libs of TikTok, would do, would it, they would tag these people's work. So there's a trans guy who was talking about, he's like, this is why I'm a trans guy. And they added the school that he works at. So they were trying to get people fired and cancel culture and all this crap, too. Another guy who's really into this is Glenn Greenwald, star of that Oliver Stone movie, where the only thing I remember about the Snowden movie was that he goes under the blanket. That's how much of a baby. That's how much of a little kid I am. <laughs> He's under a blanket. Glenn Greenwald is really, really into this. He's like, uh, I hate Taylor Lorenz, all this crap. He really invested in this. But I read everything that he wrote about uh, about this lady. He has uh, Glenn Greenwald has a substack, which very, very interesting thing about his substack is if you read in the comments, a lot of the people are like, this is Marxism. This is the problem is that everyone's a Marxist. And then, but someone else will say, well, actually, Marxism is the, 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 the. so wide net a very profitable because of its wideness net but those you know just saying but um the one kind of thing that i think is glenn greenwald's at least close to a good point is he's like the reason i don't like this lady is because she's sort of a word police she's sort of a hall monitor and the one um example of this that i'm like okay maybe you got a point here is there was a some kind of pr private or semi-private, I don't know. I don't know what this crap is, but some basically a Zoom meeting. There was a Zoom meeting that um, this lady Taylor Lorenz as like a sort of, you know, a reporter, she got into this meeting and it was a bunch of like tech investors and this guy, Mark Andreessen, she like, I guess, accused him on Twitter, which then she later said, oh, I think I got this wrong actually because it was hard to hear. But on Twitter, she kind of like accused him of saying the R word, the R word on Twitter. She didn't write a story about this in the New York Times or any of that crap. On Twitter, she said, this guy said the R word. And I'm like, and it, tur and it turns out he did not say that. So I'm, I'm sort of like, yeah, all right, you kind of have a point there. It's kind of stupid to be like, oh, did this person say that? And oh, I got him. You know, it's, it's, it's dumb. And I, yes. I agree, Glenn Greenwald. That's dumb, okay? That's annoying. By the way, this is not most of what this woman writes, by the way. I looked through all her goddamn stupid New York Times articles and Washington Post articles. So I'll read you the end of um, Glenn Greenwald's substack. But here's the end of his substack about this uh, lady. 
specifically about the story where she accused a guy of calling uh, somebody accused a guy of using the r word and then later she was like oh somebody else actually said it but it's wrong to say the r word who gives it who gives a crap but here's a Here's a good kind of summary, a paragraph from this article. That's the purpose, the function of these lowly accusatory tactics. To control, to coerce, to dominate, to repress. You have a mental health problem. To force you to take Uber cars. I added that. To the people who engage in these character assassinating, censorship fostering games, especially those who call themselves, quote, journalists, unquote, deserve nothing but intense scorn. And those who are free from their, and th I'm going to read this like I'm like MLK. And those who are free from their influence and power have a particular obligation to, that's not really MLK, to heap it on them. Aside from being what it deserves, that scorn is the only way to neutralize this tactic. So uh, here's Glenn Greenwald. Is What is this, just today? It's just yesterday when I guess this the story was about to come out from this lady, Taylor Lorenz, where she says, oh, this is the lady behind this uh, uh, crap. Taylor Lorenz is about to, quote, expose, unquote, the private citizen, I'm sorry, behind some anonymous account on Twitter. And when people criticize her for it, she and her friends will claim Taylor is the real victim, TM. <laughs> That's good, good, very clever, Glenn. And anyone criticizing this type of journalism will be guilty of causing her trauma. So this is kind of interesting. Glenn Greenwald, in the in, on his substack, he's like, people need to start calling out these bitches, bro. People need to start calling out people like this who go around, you know, monitoring people's speech, you know, and accusing them of things and trying to get them fired and trying to get them in trouble. And then when this story comes out, he's like, She's she's just harassing a, a private citizen. But wait a second, Glenn. Wait a second. Hold on, though. Wait, doesn't what you're saying, doesn't what you're saying in that Substack apply to that Libs of TikTok account, too? That they're, you know, this account that's accusing people and word policing and ba 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 for some reason. For some reason. It only goes... With Glenn Greenwald, it only goes one way, which is the way that... So this lady, Taylor Lorenz, says some guy said the R word when he didn't. And then later she's like, okay, sorry, I got it wrong. But some these people were all saying the R word. I thought it was him. She needs to be called out for that. But, this, but then this account, this anonymous account, Libs of TikTok is just posting stuff of, that they dig up on teachers' TikTok accounts that they're saying, oh, hey, I'm gay or whatever, I'm trans, and putting, oh, there's a pedophile. And this lady who teaches a sex ed the crap in Kentucky, she's a pedophile. Those people, <laughs> Glenn's silent on that one. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm Glenn Greenwald. <laughs> the other thing I love about Glenn Greenwald is he, one of his things, if you read on his Substack, he's always like, the corporate media, man. The corporate, by the way, he goes on Fox all the time. <laughs> the cor I'm fighting the corporate media, man. This, this Libs of TikTok thing is as popular as, as it is, is because corporate media. Tucker Carlson is talking about this crap. All, all these morons. Look, if, you know, there were really a principle, Tucker, that everyone was willing to agree with, that anybody who obtained any influence on social media, even if they wanted to remain anonymous to protect their family or their workplace, or their community, now is fair game to be investigated and unmasked, right. no matter their political ideology. Everybody was, was subject to that. I wouldn't agree with that, but at least I could swallow it. The idea Me that too. as soon as someone gains influence, they're fair game for reporting. But you know that's not the case. If, imagine, for example, if I tomorrow go to Tucker, to Taylor Lorenz's home and bang on her door, or Fox sends a camera crew to her parents' house, or some right-wing <laughs> independent journalist goes to her sibling's workplace and says, we're here to find out information about Taylor Lorenz, an extremely powerful and influential journalist. Or imagine if you unmask the identity of, say, a trans activist who was popular on Facebook. Yeah, but Glenn Greenwald. Yeah, but Glenn Greenwald, though. None of those people or whatever are are just <laughs> randomly calling people pedophiles. That would be a big difference. That's why I think there's a little bit of more of a gray area. I mean, this lady, Taylor Lorenz, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan or whatever. 
I read the I read the article about libs of TikTok, and I think it's a good article. However, I don't think she needed to. Uh, I definitely don't think she needed for this article to be good for her to have found the creator of the thing. Doesn't really make much of a difference, but it's definitely in a gray area when you're willy nilly calling people pedophiles and child molesters for no reason, with no evidence or no real case of that. Now you're now you've broken the social contract enough where I kind of at least can sympathize with somebody breaking it back at you. This is this is a rule of thumb. This is a rule of thumb, okay? You you accuse someone of being a pedophile for no reason. Uh, you are in what we call social international waters now. People are gonna be mean to you if you're just like. Oh, that's a gay person. Somebody's gay or trans. They're a pedophile. Okay, you're... That's... That's... Probably people are going to be mean to you. And I don't know exactly who went. It's not clear. Someone uh, associated with the Washington Post piece went to uh, the house of... The well, and, li- and so lady of TikTok. Lives of TikTok and also called the family members. Right. So lives a TikTok account was saying that that was her like, hi, Taylor, which one of my family members houses did you like going to the most or harassing? Right. You can read the tweet right there. So that's their assertion is that that is her. Yeah. Going it's, to relatives houses. If they showed up at my house on my property, I would smack that mask back <laughs> and watch them Charlie Brown roll. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I would just be taking the batteries out of my ring. So fun things could happen. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'll let you in in just one second. Yeah, just hang on. It's yeah. got a, there's a little problem here with yeah, the I mean, wiring. Turn off the cameras. The door would just open like a haunted house. Yes. Let's. <laughs> you virgins remember you're talking about a young woman, right? Remember? If she came to my house, I would beat her. I would beat her with the. I would turn my ring off. I would turn my ring. <laughs> By the way, like trying to be a tough guy and then bringing up your ring. The thing that sort of like white wine moms use to like report, there's a black guy in the neighborhood uh, you're using to be a tough guy. Oh, we're so tough. A guy who got flattened by a, like a 60-year-old union guy, a borderline dwarf, and a Disney Channel dad. Yeah, we would beat that young woman up if she came to asking questions. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. If you're just posting some, oh, hey, we're taking it back to what, 2013, 14, where it's like, anti-SJW, like, oh, this woman has green hair and she's yelling. Yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, go go ahead, you know. A lot of that stuff is cringy. Go for it. But, you know, you're calling you're calling people pedophiles. You're adding their school. You know, this poor... My, one of my favorite ladies now, really, the Kentucky trillbilly lady who's like, hey, I'm going to try to help people out with this rampant... <laughs> unplanned pregnancy crap so i'll teach a a, i'll do a sex ed workshop that people can bring their kids to she's a pedophile get get the get our many many guns and go let's go get her man so there's one thing i have to there's one way to describe all this crap and that is disgusting and probably illegal i have a suggestion you know i don't know if glenn greenwald has like a suggestion box for stories you know like recommendation tips for stories i have an idea for a story that he could write he could investigate into this like he did with snowden the fact that generally speaking chinese people look chinese you know look into it man do some invest maybe go to china is this true well guys we all know what day it is wednesday the worst day Oh, I like to do this. It's one of the worst days. It's like, oh, shit, and all that crap. It's one of the, not one of the best days. Not one of my favorite. Not one of my favorites. It's not one. Of, not a great day. Not a great. We don't like that day. It's not one of the best days. But who gives a crap? You know, we see it's Wednesday, and we look and we say this to the calendar. You're a moron. You're 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 a moron. And then we say no. <laughs> well, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you ever forget where my videos are, uh, just to remind you, that's on YouTube. Love you and bye-bye. Hey guys, you're only getting a fraction of the weekly shows. If you want a new mother episode every day, subscribe on Patreon for as little as two bones. You get the patron-only Tuesday and Thursday shows, the book a Blega show where we look at important books, and the goddamn weekly behind-the-scenes show. And for only 25 bones, you could become a producer and get your name up here. Look at these people. These people make this show possible. If it, wa- if it wasn't for them, 
nothing. We don't have a show. We got nothing, and, it go and it's garbage. Garbage. And we have to just leave. We have to just basically walk away, and we don't even really know where we're walking. That's 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 the truly troubling part about all this. But please, become a patron today for as little as two bones, or if you or five bones is another level, or ten, or you go the full twenty-five and you get up here. Big special thanks to these people. Love you guys. Love you guys so much.